When I first heard about Wonder Woman 1984, I was skeptical. I didn't see how the grim and cheerless atmosphere of the Wonder Woman mythos could be reconciled with the more colorful and optimistic spectacle of George Orwell's Animal Farm, especially since Orwell's writings just don't seem relevant to today's world. But thankfully, I was proven wrong by a script from Patty Jenkins and Jeff Johns, the latter of whom is best known for helping start the DC Comics shared universe with the excellent Ryan Reynolds film Green Lantern. After a brief advertisement for the upcoming Tokyo Olympics, the story begins properly in 1984, with a more serious and adult tone than we had with the previous films in the Snyderverse. The aesthetics are more muted, the action is grittier, and we see that Diana Prince, like any strong independent woman, is completely hung up on the first handsome man she ever met, even decades after he died. But then the movie takes the first of its many dark turns as Wonder Woman, thanks to a clever plot contrivance, is able to bring her long-lost Steve Trevor back, but in the body of some random guy who doesn't know Diana or have any reason to interact with her. Very quickly, Wonder Woman 1984 becomes one of the five best bodily horror films of 2021 so far, as this man, whose name we never learn, has no choice but to allow his body to be used for the goals and pleasures of Trevor and Prince. In fact, the very idea of his presence is callously thrown aside by Wonder Woman. How about this guy? How about him? I don't want him. I want you. Wonder Woman 1984 lined up to be Hollywood's first movie of the post-Me Too era, and it clearly takes that responsibility seriously by not shying away from presenting the stark reality of how voiceless victims can truly be, as this nameless man literally cannot speak out about what is happening to him. It symbolizes how white-collar workers are seen as interchangeable drones, valued only for their bodies and their nice city apartments, and that they are ultimately the pawns of far more important and powerful forces, even ones lingering from several generations ago. Just like Steve Trevor carelessly manipulates this man's body, so too is our own present-day upper-middle-class hero still suffering from the decisions made in the past. Wonder Woman 1984's boldness in exploring these themes is what makes it such a powerful force to be taken seriously. Unlike Orwell's work, the movie ends on a down note, as the victim confronts his rapist in a powerful scene, only to see that she is completely unaffected by her actions. In this cold and unforgiving world that Patty Jenkins has presented to us, there are no true heroes, there is no real compassion, and everyone is hopeless, powerless, and alone. The main opponent of Wonder Woman 1984 is Maxwell Lord, a character based on Donald Trump. He hits on all the cliches of Hollywood portrayals of Trump. He is unsuccessful, lacks power and influence, is largely unknown but is driven by love and the desire to impress his family, and he works hard to make sure everyone around him feels happier and more fulfilled. We've seen Trump presented this way a hundred times before, and just like every other Hollywood version of the man, he is shown to eventually do the right thing and redeem himself by the end. We have a secondary villain named Cheetah, and at first I thought this was a superfluous character designed to simply give us more fistfights. But upon reflection, I had what is known as an icebox scene. The great filmmaker Albert Hitchcock defined an icebox scene as something that Hits you after you've gone home and started pulling cold chicken out of the ice box. In this case, the moment I pulled my chicken was when I remembered that the moral of the movie's opening was that cheetahs never win. And here we saw a cheetah lose, thus completing Wonder Woman's character arc. It's like poetry, except that it rhymes. It's this kind of clever setup and follow through that truly synthesizes a flawless masterpiece such as Wonder Woman 1984. This movie is not without its flaws, however. Try as I might, I still can't see Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. She doesn't look the part, and she never quite fits into the costume. Also, Pedro Pascal's performance is lifeless and lacks energy. I can't help but feel that these two let down the stellar script from Jenkins and Johns, and prevented the film from being perfect. But that doesn't stop Wonder Woman 1984 from being a perfect film. Through nuance and subtlety, it treats the audience with respect, rewards the viewer who pays attention, and provides a level of brilliance in storytelling that will have all of us talking about it for years to come.